Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the mini witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, we're going to do two projects using tea lights for your D&D table. Good job! The other day I was sitting at my painting desk and I wasn't in the mood to paint. I really wanted to craft something with my hands. About a year ago, I created this crystal formation. It was incredibly easy and I had a lot of fun doing it. With this inspiration, I decided it was time to revisit this project. This time around, I created glowing rainbow crystals and to go with them, I designed this color shifting portal. I thought that both of these ideas sounded easy and fun. Unfortunately, I was incorrect on both accounts, but in the end, I was able to create something that I think is really cool and still worthwhile in sharing. First, let's start with the rainbow glowing crystals. My idea was simple. Go to the dollar store, buy color shifting candles, remove the plastic outer case, reveal the wires, battery, and light inside, sculpt milliput around that, leaving the light sticking out and then glue my crystals right on top of it. I didn't want to create a project that included any wiring or soldering or anything complicated. In theory, this was supposed to be incredibly simple. Unfortunately, there were two problems with that. First, the leads were incredibly short and I didn't have the mobility that I thought that I was going to have, which would have allowed me to more easily reconfigure where the battery and the light connected and the angles to do so. Secondly, I have no idea what I'm doing. After a lot of trial and error, I disassembled the candle as much as I could and decided to build my milliput base just over as much of the plastic as I could, still leaving that light out at the top. Unfortunately, this led to a far larger crystal base than what I had intended. And I definitely could have cut off this piece right here to have made a smaller base, but maybe next time. To give my base texture, I use a piece of bark as a stamp and press it into the milliput. After I sculpted my milliput around the base, I turned the LED light on and off several times. My theory was that I would move the milliput around enough that that switch could still turn on and off. Unfortunately, that's not how it worked out, but in my favor, it did get stuck in the on position. So now the only way to turn this on and off is to put the battery in and then take the battery out. But in the grand scheme of things, that's not the worst outcome that could have happened. Then it's on to the crystals. The crystals are created by cutting up hot glue sticks. Please make sure that you are using appropriate safety equipment and safety gear when you're doing this, unlike I do for part of this video. Cut your glue sticks at varying heights and then cut off the rounded edges until you get a very angular shape. Then you will cut the edge of one end of your crystal into a point. Remember that crystals are organic and they in no way need to be perfect. If you would like more variety in your crystals, you can buy even thicker glue sticks and add those to your base as well. Once my milliput was dry, I then super glued my crystals around the LED light, covering it up as much as possible. To hide the seam between the milliput and crystals, I took super glue and baking powder and used them to create a realistic sandy texture. Then I painted the base brown, did a black wash and a little bit of dry brushing. Overall, I'm very happy with this project and I think that I will create more for my D&D table since we are primarily an Underdark campaign. Other than the on-off issue, I think that this was very successful and overall I'm very happy with it and I think it looks really cool. The glowing portal gave me a lot more trouble than I was expecting, and I made a lot of mistakes while crafting this project. I made one iteration in the beginning only to completely scrap it, and then this final iteration that you will be seeing still had its own flaws. 
In the end, I think that it is successful, but it was definitely a bumpy road. So don't follow every step you see me do. Instead, listen to the instructions and that way you won't make the same mistakes that I made. The first thing you're going to do is take your tea light and then you're going to pull off that fake plastic flame. We will not be needing it. I wanted my portal to be a realistic height for the 28 millimeter models that I use. To accomplish this, I took two pieces of dollar store foam core and glued them together using white glue. Next, I traced my circles and cut them out using an X-Acto blade. Gluing the poster board together before I cut out my circles saved me a lot of time and I highly recommend doing this step first. Don't cut them out separately and try to glue them together later. After my foam circles were cut, I then cut a circle in the middle of each one in the size of my tea light. When you're deciding the height of your portal, be sure to leave a little room between the top layer of plastic that you'll use to diffuse the light as well as the top of the candle. To give the portal a more diffused, smoky look, I use a piece of thick plastic painted with Mod Podge. To make this look more cohesive with the portal, I cut the top step in half, cutting right between those two layers of foam core. Next, I roughly cut a circle out of that plastic and slid it in between those two layers of foam core. The idea is, is that you want to fit that piece of plastic as perfectly as you can. You don't want to cut the steps totally in half, just about three fourths of the way. That way you can glue it back together and it should still line up. So I cut my circle of plastic, stuck it in, rounded it off as need be so it perfectly matched the inside and then cut off my outside so that it perfectly fit within that foam core and looked cohesive. At this point in the project, I glued the plastic in, which I do not recommend. I got paint on my plastic and it sort of ruined the diffused foggy look. So I recommend putting it in closer to the end. To continue the diffused look of this portal, I took a little bit of pillow batting, stuck that down the hole of my steps, and then put the candle in. Of course, like I said, you can do this at any time whenever you glue the hard plastic in. I just happened to do it at this point in this project. I wanted this terrain to have a cobblestone look. So taking an X-Acto knife, I cut individual cobblestones into the foam. Unfortunately, this is where I made my biggest mistake. I sculpted my cobblestones too far apart, leaving too much of a gap in between and almost making it so that it became its own element. I should have carved my cobblestones closer together and treated the cut sections like my grout. Then glue all of your steps together. At this point, I was hoping that I was going to be able to fix this with painting, so that's what I did next. Then I paint the entire thing black. In an attempt to fix my stone grout problem, I pressed down the grout, hoping the difference in height would make it look more realistic. First, you can't even see what I'm doing because I'm blocking the camera, but second, it didn't help at all, so that doesn't matter. Next, I crushed a piece of tin foil into a ball and rolled it across my phone to give it a natural and realistic texture. I then moved on to painting the stones individually. I mixed up four different colors so that there was some realistic but still natural variation. I mixed up a blue, a brown, a gray, and a red. I painted each stone individually by hand, attempting to highlight the edges of each stone so that there would be more contrast between the black grout and the edges of the stone. At this point, I was seriously considering giving up, but I had already showed it to my dungeon master and he loved it and had already planned on using it in an upcoming adventure. So I needed to move forward and continue trying to save it. So I decided to take a bit of a gamble. My idea was to use the baking soda and super glue technique and try to get a sandy texture and fill in those gaps. For me, it worked out perfectly. And I'm actually really pleased with how it came out because I think that the gritty sandy texture is more natural and really interesting. However, 
I don't recommend doing it unless you make a mistake like I did. It's really not worth all of the extra effort that I had to go through to get it to this point. So consider this a very good, happy accident that I was able to salvage it in this way, but I don't recommend doing it this way. When you're painting this concoction, I recommend adding extra water to your paint. The baking soda tends to absorb excess liquid, so it's going to be a lot easier if you add extra water to your paint that can easily be absorbed. After painting the grout gray, I went back over it with the black wash and it actually was happy with what I ended up with. Then it was on to adding greenery for this piece. I took clumps of static grass, cut them in half and glued them sporadically so that it looked like grass was growing up through those stones. I also took, oh no, I don't know what it's called. Um, this stuff and mixed it in with white glue and then dab that around the stairs. My idea was is that it would look like moss growing up the sides of the staircase. Lastly, I took glue, dribbled it around the piece, and then sprinkled crushed oregano over top to look like leaves. Even though this was a really big pain in the butt to get to this point, I'm surprisingly happy with it. Hopefully this has inspired you and will help you avoid some of the pitfalls that I made when I was working on this project. If you recreate either of these projects and post them on Instagram, please tag me. I would love to see your work. What other ideas can you come up with to use for tea lights? I feel like there needs to be more than just these two options for tea lights. So if you have any other ideas, please leave them down below and maybe I'll make a part two. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't and follow me on Instagram and I'll see you next time.